Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show. Uh, we're back in the triple format today. The three-way, the line. Sweet. Three Musketeers. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's kick straight off with some bouldering news and UK bouldering news at that. Will Bosey is having a pretty good summer, having climbed his first 9B sport route and a ton of hard boulders. Will has just climbed Serenata, an 8C at Impossible Roof near Sheffield in the UK. The route is one of the UK's hardest boulder problems, linking an 8B plus into a 7C plus boulder. Will is only the fourth person to climb the route and it's his second 8C boulder. So nice one, Will. Congratulations. Um, he has done one other 8C in Magic Wood, uh, Practice of the Wild. And apparently he did that super quickly. This one was a bit more of a battle for Will, but he got it done. And nice. yes, yeah, nice one. Good form. Nice. And next up, Alex Magos was always in good form and he went back to Seuss. Alex Magos went back to Seuss after the Brian Sun World Cup and red pointed L'étrange Ivresse de l'Inter, 9A+. He commented that the route felt more like a 9A+, forward slash B. However, Adam Andra proposed a grade of 9A+. Alex even got back on the classic 9A+, biography, to compare the difficulties of the routes, and concluded that L'Etrange d'Ivresse felt harder than both 9 pluses in Seyus. Great debate. Great debate. Is it great Alex, debate? Alex upgrading um, Adam Andra route. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a 9A+, plus, uh, forward, slash forward, B. forward slash B. Did yeah. you have to write forward slash? No, I didn't. Have you been following Alex Magos' YouTube channel? Uh, yeah, he's, he's been uploading posting yeah. regularly. Yep. Yeah. We've got, we've got yeah. it embedded on the website, handpicked. It's it's up there, you can check it out. I quite like it. It's kind of like mellow, but a little less budget. On Alex. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like mellow, it's like Alex Alex needs, like someone needs to get him an upgraded iPhone and mm. a banging skater soundtrack, and it's the new mellow. I reckon he could if he wanted to. I reckon that's his artistic choice. Mm. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Uh, next up, we've got news of uh, Nils Favre. Swiss climber Nils Favre, along with his French climbing partner, Simon Welfringer, have made an ascent of the 23 mega pitch line Paciencia on the Eiger North Face. The route, graded at 8A, has seen several ascents over the years, with the first ascent being made by Stefan Segrist and the late Uli Steck back in 2008. Paciencia took the pair two days, with Nils Favre, who is mainly a boulderer, going through a bit of a multi-pitch transition over the last couple of years in order to realise his dream line. The route is steep and technical, with seven of the 23 pitches 7A plus or harder. So this is a bit of a classic uh, in on the Eiger North Face. I looked into it. Obviously, Uli Stex established it with Stefan Segrist, so mm -hmm. two massive legends. Mm -hmm. But then also um, Dave McLeod's done it. Um, Roger Shiley's done it. Okay. Uh, David Lama's done it. Okay. So it's like right. a like a real classic kind of like hard sport climbing alpine type of route. Yeah. Um, so impressive. Also, Robbie Phillips has done it. Is Nils and still? Willis Morris. Is he still biking around, or is he is he taking the trains yet? Who's that? Nils, Nils Fabre. Wasn't he on a bike? No, trip? no, that was Nico Fabre. Oh gosh, that is similar that is names. Bad. It's similar. the same. Yeah. NF. Uh, yeah. <laughs> going to get shot Probably by the slip. YouTube audience. Uh, it's me, uh, and it is cool to see competition climbing returning to our screens. And this weekend was the Slovenian Bouldering Championships. The comp that can still be found on the Slovenian Climbing Facebook page brought together some of the strongest climbers on the Slovenian climbing scene. For the women, it was Janja Garnbrett who was simply unstoppable. She topped all four boulders and looked in fantastic form. For the men, it was Zan Lovenjak Sudar who won with three tops, beating two World Cup winners along the way. So yeah, that comp is still up on the Facebook page. Uh, you can just have a look and rewatch it if you want to. It's up there. Um, I want to talk about Yanya because, right, you, you know when you get like a world, so she was beaten in Briançon, right, by Laura, and everyone was kind of like, oh my God, she's human. And then she came into this comp and it was like, oh no, she's still an alien. She's still incredible. Um, but, you know, it's testament to Yanya. Like it wasn't a disappointment. Second place isn't a disappointment mm. in Briançon. Uh, and yet she's back on top place podium positions for her. So nice one. And Zan as well, beat some big names there. So nice one, man. Yeah, I haven't heard of him. I haven't either, really. He's kind of, I think he's sort of underground, like just, because I mean, the thing is, when you've got people like Jeanne there, you know, there's some big names who really dominate that Slovenian team. Yeah. And I think you've got some world-class athletes just under the big names, you know, sure. they're just waiting to come through. Yeah. So it's, it's cool for him to sort of get a bit of limelight. How did Jeanne do? Uh, I think he came, it was hard to, it was hard to he find this out, to be on honest. on the podium, though. He, he was on the podium. Mm -hmm. He's either third or second. Uh, information was hard to get by, but I, th I think he came second. Oh, in Slovenian. I think. It was a lot of Slovenian, yeah, and it's not, my Slovenian isn't great. Um, <laughs> That's my French, German, anything. 
Anyway, next up, uh, we're going to France, where Loïc has sent a bunch of hard routes. 18-year-old French climber Loïc Zehani, who has done 21 routes ranging from 9A to 9B, lately has added three impressive ascents to his scorecard. His first, 8C flash, stay crantum, stay safe, at the crag of Saint-Léger. And then, on the, his last day of summer holidays, he red-pointed Sahara, 9A+, and a couple of days later, Sangneuf, 9A. Nice one, Loïc. See you. Zahani. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> where is he? Is he French, right? He's French, yeah. And he put up uh, last year a 9B and skipped a 9A+. Plus, so this was his first 9A+. Plus. He sounds like my kind of dude. I like, I like it when that happens. It's just like, eh, that great. Eh, <laughs> yeah, just leave it. Skip it. Yeah. Skip it, skip it. Right, next up, we got some big uh, unsighting news from Seus. ETA.NU reports that German climber Martina Demo has had an incredibly successful trip to Seus. In just a couple of weeks, she managed a huge 17 routes of 7C to 8B+, all on site. The 18-year-old does not seem to be particularly interested in projecting the harder routes, but wants to climb as many routes in as short a time as possible. It's going to be interesting to see what she can do when she starts red pointing. So another 18-year-old, mm -hmm. uh, yep. German this time, and I, what I quite like about this story is that she's on sighting. She's not, she's not projecting, she's like... I want to just like splay my name over the topo. Not, yeah. not literally, but she's like, I want to get as many lines from the topo as possible. She's on sighting. Like crazy. Who on sites these days? That many routes in a couple of weeks. People go to like trips to a project, don't they? Mm -hmm. But I feel this. it's the proper way to do a climbing a trip. trip. Yeah, because yeah. you get to climb more. Yeah, so climb a, like mm. your standard, basically. <laughs> but then every time, let's say you fail an on-site, do you just go like, oh, that was it, uh, fail next it, one. and on to the next one? Like, I, I mean, I would fail, I wouldn't climb anything. <laughs> like, I get nothing done every trip. Like but is there not like a theory six that like, ten, it's yeah. like you have five tries and then you should just like move on? Could be. I'll yeah. try that one. Yeah, because then it's like, then that's your standard. If you like, yeah. if you have five tries at it and you don't climb it, move on. I just have five tries, sulk a bit, get back on, sulk some more, get back on. Climbing's all I've got, man. Mad up. Maddie, your trad newsing. <laughs> My trad newsing. Uh, yeah, trad news from the UK. Madeleine Cope has just made the third ascent of the final round, E9 6C, on Inlam Rock, Dovedale. It was first climbed by Tom Randall back in 2015, and it remains the hardest trad route on peak limestone. This route starts off with tacky bolt climbing up to a rest, and then a sequence of monos to reach Eye of the Tiger, E7 6C. Am I right in thinking that, you know, to, so Tom Randall did it originally, yeah. was it that video where he had the sky hook sellotape to his chest and then he was like putting them on? Is it that video? Yeah, it's on uh, the Rab YouTube page, <laughs> which you just found. That's why it's, fine. No, it's you can funny. It. I don't mind. I don't need uh, benediction. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that is a cool video. And Mono is above micro gear or whatever, sky hooks, whatever. Why? It's bonkers, Maddie and Tom, bonkers. Yeah. Yeah, well done. Well done, guys. Right, um, have we got to talk about the Actarius Academy? Because I think there's the last one coming up this weekend. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So we covered the first one a couple yes. of weeks ago. This is the final one. And there are, can you tell, what are the spaces available? So we've got Friday uh, free for crevasse rescue. And, right. uh, you know, book it because it's important to know how to do crevasse rescue safely. That one as well on Sunday, places available. And then mountaineering level two, three. Anyway, check out the website. Link is below. For anybody who doesn't know what the Arcteris Academy in Chamonix is, Matt, give them a, a two-sentence rundown. You get professional, uh, high-standard guides and Arcteryx athletes teaching you in very small groups the mountain skills you need. It's like it's the most unique experience ever, and you're going to learn so, so much. And I'm not just flogging it because I like Arcteryx. I think it's a really cool little clinic. And I just want to say, from going from a non-event, everything was cancelled, to these weekends has been an amazing achievement from everyone. So nice one, Shamex. Nice one, Arcteryx. Yeah, get involved. A couple of places left. Boom. Nine count now. There's no action on the 9B counter. Or any counter. Maddie's E9, isn't she? E9. So just me and e E10. You know that Maddie's E9 was actually originally graded 8A plus forward slash BHXS. That's too much. <laughs> just, just means death route. Uh, I don't know why Tom uh, graded it like that initially, but he did. But E9 works as well. E9 yeah. succeed. Uh, but there's nothing for these bad boys, these wonderful paper coppers. Just the normal. Should we have a little rundown on screen? Have, there you go. Have a little rundown.
That's what's happening. Laura, Laura, Laura. you're winning. Yep. That's what you need to know. Mm -hmm. It's media's time. It mm -hmm. is. Just thought, yeah, yes. Before we get excited. Um, <laughs> Laura, <laughs> Laura Rogera is uh, hot stuff at the moment. Did I? I don't know if you noticed, but she climbed the 9B last week. The video came out last week. She climbed like a month ago. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> you got told we've got, there. We've got another, <laughs> we've got another uh, documentary coming out about Laura Rogora, made by one of our favorite filmmakers, Andrea Kosu. Here's a little clip. Quando arrampico provo delle emozioni uniche che non provo mai, quindi sia in gara che sulla roccia c'è una grandissima scarica di adrenalina. Poi quando provo una via raggiungo anche un livello di concentrazione che non raggiungo in nessun altro momento della vita, quindi tutto intorno a me scompare, mi concentro solo su quello che sto facendo e sul gesto dell'arrampicata. So there you go, that is a uh, something or other documentary about Laura Rogora, Rogora mm -hmm. uh, coming out. Sorry if I butchered your name, Laura. I get the, the first bit, Laura, Laura, although it is Laura Rogora. Laura Rogora? Yeah. It's just Laura R. Laura R, exactly. L R. Uh, uh, right. uh, can we talk about friends? Because everyone needs friends. Oh, uh, everybody does need true. friends. Especially micro friends as a small human being. You just need me around people. But the reason I'm talking about this is because we did a uh, gear show last Friday about Wild Country Zero Friends. So it's the mini micros. We took them up, we tested them, we tried them out. Um, they're available in the Epic TV shop. Do see the video, it's linked down below, but do check out the cams as well. They're cool cams uh, and they're cheap-ish at the moment. I mean, good value-ish at the value. moment. They're you discounted. Don't want cheap, but... No, you don't want cheap micro cams. Or friends. Yeah, I mean, I say cheap good value, friends. they're still about 70 <laughs> no. euros. So. Um, but yeah, that's on the Epic TV shop, so grab some cams if you haven't already. Cool, comment of the week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Teresa okay. promised last week that she'd sing, Matt. Uh, right, um, well, promised this week or? No. I make no such promises I won't keep. Uh, also, my voice is a bit cracky, so I feel you can do it again. Okay. Uh, right, ready? Comment. Comment. <laughs> Every time. We just go We just go into some sort of weird <laughs> harmonious quiet, melody. Quiet boy harmony. Yeah, it's beautiful. And we, oh. I, I go really sincere, my eyes widen and everything. That's because you used to be in a choir. I did, I genuinely did. I, I, I was eight years old, that. we Are toured America. Pictures? It was. It's a whole new life. There are pictures, I'll show you later. Um, I wasn't here last week, so I always feel a bit weird picking a comment, so I picked the one talking about me. Uh, and it says, from Fabian Scherer, uh, I want to see Matt Speedfly WTF. Um, Hugo, I think, thank you very much for saying I'm speed flying. It's, you, you've done me a great <laughs> service there, because I, I, speed, I'm learning to paraglide, right? Which is like sort of floating sedately Same through thing, the air, right? trying to avoid everything. Speed, speed flying is kind of like whipping through the air close to trees. I'm not at the whipping through the air close stage yet. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I mean, Maybe after soon. that is wingsuit flying, isn't it? And then you're... Base jumping. It's a simple step, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But thank you very much, uh, Fabian, who wants to see me do that. But I'm not doing it currently, mate. Okay. Uh, got uh, one. No, no, you go for it. Why is it funny? Um, I got a whole essay from Martin, Ooh. which I'm going to summarize, summarize a it. little bit. It starts off with, hey, guys, and cheers. So, And the middle part is basically our opinion on knee bars and uh, knee, pads. Uh, knee pads. Oh, what the whole, this is it cheating? Oh. No, not cheating debate, just how much do they help out the climber? Yeah, what we're we going to have next? Sticky gloves. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. I had opinions on my tongue there, I was like, should I rein him in? Maybe we give a... Okay, so what's, Teresa, your, your comment? Uh, knee, knee on pads. knee pads. Cool or no cool? I mean, nobody likes bruises on their legs, especially on your knees, so why not use them? Yep. 
Uh, Hugo? I, well, to be honest, if like if we didn't have knee pads, somebody would come out with a pair of trousers with very, very padded uh, knee pads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of like they did back in the 80s with shoulder pads. There'd be people like just walking around like with these big things in there. <laughs> Massive knees. knees. Yeah. Be like, it's no big deal. Like, it's just a fashion thing. And then they get up into the room and wedge it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And be like, ah, that's why you did it. I'd wear them. Yeah, exactly. So people would like pretend it was fashion, mm. but it would actually be aid. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't think it, I think it's fine. I think climbing gear just changes. Because otherwise, what are we going to do? Like, go back. Well, it's like, like upgrades, exactly. like little upgrades it's like, over okay, the so years. You, you got to climb with no climbing shoes because that didn't used to exist. No cams, no nuts. I mean, like, where do you stop? I'm okay with a knee bar. I've used a knee bar. I like the idea of uh, knots in cracks, no chalk. I don't and, like that. Uh, Capular boots. No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, okay, right, my next one is uh, from Matt Norris. Matt Norris, who often comments on the shows. Thanks, Matt. Matt. She says, does she even climb? Like, what mountain are you doing? What's on the books this weekend? Mm, a mountain so Teresa we had a little conversation about what you were doing we this did. weekend we did past and weekend. you were it was uh, like you were pretty shady about it yeah you yeah, didn't yeah. want to talk about it I do you did. want to talk about it now yeah no uh, it was good was it yeah no it was fine um, <laughs> you, I just dropped yourself, my camera fine. Ooh, oh, 13 yes. pitches up. Oh, dear. so if anybody wants to go <laughs> kind of sounds like a, uh, up and look for a camera an ascent of Annapurna, where some other guy lost his camera on the Pio way Mano. That's another discussion point. But did you actually top it? Because there's no evidence that no, I mean, yeah. you didn't top it. Phones, phones, phones. phones Which I was okay. about to drop as well, but didn't. Uh, okay, well, there you go. Anyway, that I was I thought you weekend. were going to go for um, uh, the Iger North Face, but that was, nah, that was next Nils. Time. No, it was like the weather was a bit, eh, so you, you know. Got call, you got oh. the call from Nils, but you're like, nah. I was like, no, nah, not this here. time, thanks. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> anyway, uh, your weekends <laughs> Your weekends. Uh, your weekends. Uh, we're back on the road, in fact. We are filming uh, Mr. Trevor Messiah, who is mm. a rock climbing instructor. He's going to be doing a beginner tip series, looking at all types of things like stripping roots, building anchors, top roping, all of that. So we're filming with him this weekend. Where are you going? Fun. Uh, quite uh, a sort of north of Alicante, near the coast. It's going to be great. Are you scared? Uh, of of, of travel times. is this is my first time on a plane since March, and you know our usual schedules. We're on a plane every couple of weeks usually, and uh, yeah, I'm quite excited. I miss that Geneva bad cafe when we first go in with the terrible coffee. I kind of miss it. I don't miss that. Do you not miss it? No, and a smoothie, a six euros for a smoothie. No, yeah. five great. francs water. <laughs> That's the best. Geneva Airport. Uh, Tries your weekend. Um. You should just be like, you should be like straight up mountains. And mountains, that's it from now on. another mountain. Just, whew. yeah, me too. Mountains, 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 mountain biking. Go. Last weekend of the mountain biking season in Muzin. Ah, oh, it's gone. Nice. Well, no, not quite. It's, it's one, gone. One more. One more. One yeah. More. Like you... the Arcturus Academy, we got one more dance. Last waltz in Muzin. Cool. Yeah. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, podcasters. Thank you for listening, and we will see you Can we next wave? week. Do the wave. Do the wave. Roll wave. Like Roll wave. Five well, seconds. Five hello. seconds. Hello. Not chill. Fade to black. <laughs>